Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're on the uh, sort of outer edge of Lyndhurst, often considered the capital of the New Forest. And we're going to be walking a linear route, basically following the course of the Bewley River from its source here at Lyndhurst all the way through to Bewley. Now the river itself is about 12 miles long, but it's non-tidal for the first eight miles up to Bewley and then becomes tidal for the final four miles or so as it flows out to sea in the Solent. Now we did a similar walk along the route of the Highland Water and this route will take us across Heathland, through Woodland and hopefully we'll get to see some interesting things along the way. So we've been dropped off here at Lyndhurst and the plan is that hopefully we'll get picked up at the other end at Bewley. Now looking at the weather, well, there's a fair bit of cloud about. The sun is up there somewhere. Um, I think we're going to be fairly dry, so fingers crossed it should be perfect conditions for walking. So do come along with us. Well the best place to start is at the source of the Bewley River, which is just behind me here. And there it is, or should I say that's where the water first meets the surface. We're at uh, the northern edge of the village at Pikes Hill. Now an 1895 map suggests the source is at a pond just on the other side of uh, the fence over there, just behind um, that uh, rhododendron bush. Um, but on a current Ordnance Survey map, it just seems to show us a, a single channel starting here. I'm guessing it comes from a spring. Uh, we're right at the foot of a hill, uh, Lyndhurst Hill, which is to the southwest of here. And then it, it probably goes under this little road here and then follows this ditch. Now, this is the route that we're going to be doing today. So I've got one of my Day Ford special maps. So there is the source. We need to follow the ditch to underneath the A337. Uh, then it looks as though we've got a little bit of woodland to go through, round New Forest Golf Club, then under this road to uh, Ashurst, through Fox Hill Moor, Longwater, Lawn, we've got a lot of open land here, Fulliford Bog, fingers crossed it isn't too boggy today, <laughs> Fulliford Passage and then this is um, one of the areas where we're probably going to have to do a little detour because the river goes through private land there, Potton Ford, um, again Aldermore Lodge, that's all private so we'll probably have to do a little detour here and then not far from Rushmore Pond is where we start heading south. We're probably going to have to finish the walk here at North Gate and I'll explain why when we get there, although we will finish off the walk all the way back at Bewley. So as to how much of the river we're actually going to be able to follow directly, I don't know, but we're going to have a lot of fun finding out. It looks as though the first part of the walk is following what looks like a ditch heading out of Lyndhurst. early breakfast stop for some blackberries. I don't know if they're, are they juicy enough for you? Shall I pick one for you? There's a, it's, I say it's been a great year for blackberries, but they're not particularly big. Um, yeah, I don't think Logan's that impressed. 
<laughs> well, the first section of the route's been quite easy to follow. Basically, a ditch along the side of a road. So here we are as it comes out of Lyndhurst, crosses underneath the A337 Cadnam to Lyndhurst Road. So we're going to pick it up on the other side in those woods there. We're picking up the river on the eastern side of that road, which you can probably hear in the background. And already it's uh, developed into um, well, something quite substantial. There is flowing water. We have had a fair bit of rain recently. Now just on the southern side of the river is a, a golf course, uh, a New Forest Golf Club, which I think was established in 1888. And it's one of the oldest golf clubs in Hampshire, I think. The oldest is at Bramshaw in the north. Uh, basically a nine whole golf course was established at Bramshaw in the 1880s, although a course of some description may have been on the site as far back as 1865. In the 1890s it formed a partnership with a course here, which also had nine holes, to form the New Forest Golf Club. Anyway, the partnership dissolved in 1913 when the Bramshaw course at Brook Common was extended to 18 holes, and at some stage the course here was extended to 18 holes. There was also a race course here. Uh, the first meeting was in 1776 and the last meeting in 1871. Certainly a, a course still showed on the 1895 map of the area. Well, continuing to follow what is still a stream at the moment. This is through a little bit of woodland which is on the northern side of the golf course. So I love the way the stream meanders its way through. We're here on the eastern side of the golf course. The stream changes direction and starts to head southwards. Now we have been following it. Uh, it's through these woods on my left. It's just a little bit too dark for the GoPro to film, but uh, it goes underneath a couple of little footbridges and uh, it's certainly getting bigger. My fingers crossed that uh, the sun will come out soon. I mean, it's amazing, even this far upstream, how deep some of the banks are, which shows that it can become quite a bit of a raging torrent in the winter months, I reckon. Well, I'm delighted to say the sun has made an appearance. Well, we've been following the river away from the golf course. It goes underneath the main road from Lyndhurst to Ashurst at Dunce's Arch. We couldn't actually go underneath the road there, so we've done a tiny little detour to the west to go under a proper underpass, which is uh, full of water, so we've got our feet wet already. So we're now on the southern side of that road and we're going to head eastwards to meet up with the river again. And here we are meeting up once again with the Bewley River as it comes underneath Dunce's Arch under the main road and we can now continue our journey. Well there are some quite beautiful sections of the river as it uh, meanders through this wood you can still hear the, that busy road, but we'll uh, be getting away from there quite soon. But oh, so enchanting. Well, 
we're here in Mallard Wood, the River Bewley starts to head south eastwards. Now the river and bed are owned by Lord Montague of Bewley, uh, should I say Ralph Douglas Montague Scott, 4th Baron Bewley. Uh, Bewley is French for beautiful place and the river used to be called the X and the X has uh, well the word has Celtic origins deriving from the ancient British word isca meaning fishes or fish place. On our first sighting of some new forest ponies and these ladies just uh, enjoying a little bit of shade underneath the trees trying to get away from the flies. <laughs> Well folks, I think I found a boundary stone which I wasn't expecting because uh, well there's not one on any of the maps but hey <laughs> we're gonna bag it anyway. Oh it's such a shame the sun's gone in because in front of me here is just a sea of heather and this is the best time of year to come. That beautiful purple colour now this area here is called Longwater Lawn and in the 1960s the, the river here was artificially straightened out but uh, that sped up the water flow and caused erosion so work was done to put the bends back in. I mean it should be a natural floodplain and it's certainly good pasture for, for ponies and cattle. I love that colour of the foal there. I mean a little rest lying down as foals often do of course. It's been a, a good year for foals. Uh, last year they had something like 20 stallions on the forest and uh, well anecdotally I'd say I've seen more this year than last year. There's some more youngsters on the other side of the river there. Starting to get woolly coats already. Surely summer isn't over just yet. Well whilst the sun has made a brief appearance from behind the clouds let me give you some views of the heather out on the, the plain here. It really is quite stunning. So peaceful out here as well. Well, a tiny little detour off the route. Uh, the river is, um, uh, goes uh, through where those trees are but in front of me here is an earthworks. Um, it's difficult to see with all the bracken but there's a bank and there's a, a ditch. Uh, it's a sort of circular earthworks about a hundred meters in diameter. Covers about a, a third of a hectare and the ramparts, well, they're about a, a metre high and three metres wide and there's a ditch in front of it. Originally it was thought to be an Iron Age uh, hill fort, indeed an 1895 map says uh, a quote supposed fort unquote, but recent archaeological work suggests that it dates back to Neolithic times, possibly an animal enclosure. But uh, while we're here, just look back at some of the views. Appreciate it's <laughs> quite a dull day, but there's a, a footbridge that actually goes over the river, and then well, Lindhurst will be in the very far distance. But I can just about make out the the spire of uh, the St Michael's and All Angels Church at Lindhurst, and then just slowly 
panning round and then this is Matley Wood over to the left there. Ha ha! Now this definitely is a boundary stone just on the other side of the river. It's actually in private land but uh, that boundary stone does appear on a map. Well the next section of the walk might be a bit of a challenge, I don't know. We're heading sort of uh, southeast, or should I say the river's heading southeast, uh, towards a, a railway line and we'll go underneath that railway line at the Fullerford Passage. But to get there we've got to go through an area of land called Fullerford Bog. Now I don't know how boggy it is, we'll see how we go, but it may well be that we might have to do a little detour to the west and follow a footpath round. We'll see how we go. pit stop folks just as we're making our way through the Fullyford bog <laughs> but this is the views over to the west with again or more of that quite gorgeous heather out in full flower and uh, the woods in the very far distance there is Matley Woods and we've done a walk in there in the past well there's the river just in those trees there and just in front I don't know if you can see and um, there are these little humps in the ground and I'm fairly sure those are made by ants yellow meadow ants I'm not a hundred percent sure though well the first dog dip of the day a chance for some fresh water ah now I'm gonna make a decision here do I try and make my way underneath there or do I just walk along a little bit where I think there's a proper proper path. Logan could go through there but so I've only got um, trail shoes on. Decisions, decisions. Oh do you know what my feet are so wet. <laughs> Let's go. This bit's okay. Now where do we go from here? Oh I mean it's only a few inches deep but yeah, we nearly made it. Oh probably fine we can't get round here. <laughs> Alright okay one last bit and we're over onto the other side. Oh wow <laughs> look at this for a view. Uh, we're on the, the northern side of the uh, the Bewley River now. This is really a typical New Forest heathland scene in full sunshine. I should say we didn't have too much trouble going through the Fullyford bog. Our feet got a little bit uh, muddy on occasions both my feet and Logan's <laughs> but uh, it's probably not a route that I'd do in the winter. Just for information purposes there is the uh, the archway for pedestrians and livestock that takes you underneath the railway line and keeps your feet dry. And this little section of the river goes through a lovely wooded area known as Withercombe Shade. Well I reckon we must be about halfway round now. Time for a biscuit break and some doggy chews. <laughs> mm. Well this is where we 
temporarily say goodbye to the Bewley River as it goes through some private land. We're going to have to do a little detour to the north and then meet up with it again on the other side. Um, the area around here, it's called Decoy Pond Farm, I believe. It's a, Well, there's an Edwardian house to the south with equestrian facilities and uh, there is indeed a, a decoy pond to the north, I believe. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it, but uh, a map shows that it looks like the shape of an old decoy pond, you know, the ones that they used to make for catching ducks. Now this is the river on the other side of Decoy Pond Farm coming out of the private land and well, as you can see it's now becoming quite a substantial river. So we're going to continue following the course to Potton Ford still very much going in a easterly direction. Oh, so peaceful along here. Now there are some lilies in the river and the water boatmen making their patterns as they rush across the top of the water there. Bit of a challenge now. now according to my map I think this is Potton Ford but well <laughs> doesn't look much of a, a ford to me. It looks pretty, pretty deep. Hmm. Uh, well, let's see if we can find another crossing point further along. Hmm. Do you think we could get across that? No way. Okay. Well, how about this one then? Trouble is, there's no way of getting off. The other side, it just goes into brambles. Okay, well, as you can see, I've sent the advanced party across. It doesn't look too deep, does it? I reckon this is where we can ford. Here we go. One, two, three, four, oh, five. <laughs> and we're over on the other side. <laughs> Well now the reason that I was so keen to get onto the southern side of the river is because we're just about to come across another bit of private land a um, bit around Aldermore Lodge. So we've got to make quite a big detour to the south um, before we join up with the river once more. Another little pit stop for a view. Okay, looking to the south so um, we've got the river sort of behind us. And there's a decoy pond farm, the area to the right. And then in front of us here is the vast expanse of Yew Tree Heath, where we've done a walk in the past. Now this is where once again we say goodbye to the river temporarily as it flows through some private land. And we've got oh, quite a big detour to the south before we pick up again with the river on the far side. Oh, what a lovely sight. Our first deer of the walk. Now I'm using my zoom lens on my Canon and I real struggle to keep the picture steady. Trouble is, if I get my tripod out, by the time I've done that, they'll have disappeared, but oh, they really are gorgeous, aren't they? <laughs> Well, after a little bit of a detour, we're now reacquainting ourselves with the Bewley River as it comes out of private land, heads under a road, and we now start our last section of the walk heading south. And we're going to keep on the, I think we'll keep on the western side of the river. And here's one of those open top buses that you can uh, go around and have a tour of the New Forest. And I think uh, this section of the river is where it really does start to get quite 
well it's pretty already but it becomes quite alluring through this little part we're just coming to that time of year when the fungi very much come out into their own just looking at the, the river here almost uh, almost a type of watercress I don't think it is but um, it has that look about it very much a, a freshness I know you don't get the clearness that you get in the Hampshire chalk streams but um, it does look a very healthy river to my untrained eye anyway you know even when you're not looking at the river there's so many interesting things to see and explore as you're wandering through the wood well this is the penultimate footbridge on the walk but we're going to stay on the western side until the next footbridge which we will then cross over for the very last section of the walk. Well, for all intents and purpose, this is really the end of our journey because the Bewley River leaves the forest here and goes into the Bewley estate, which is a, a private estate. Uh, there are a few places where you can see the river again from the road, but uh, it's quite uh, a busy road to walk along. So, as far as the walk's concerned, it ends here. But it's not quite the end of the video. Now that my lift has arrived to pick me up, let's pop into Bewley and have a quick look there. Just as the light begins to fade, we've come into Bewley. You can just see Bewley Palace on the other side of the, uh, the river here. We've done a video walk there. If you haven't seen that, do check it out. But uh, there was an abbey, of course, at Bewley, founded in 1204 on land given by King John, built uh, for Cistercian monks. But most of it was demolished in the uh, dissolution of monasteries. And there's the clock house. It dates to the 1300s, and it was the entrance to the abbey. The clock tower was added in the 19th century and I believe it was used by the Home Guard in World War II. Now, just over the wall there is Bewley Palace House. As I said, we have done a video there, but uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It dates to the 13th century. Originally, it was the gatehouse for the Abbey, and the estate was bought by Thomas Rearsley. I'm never sure if that's how you pronounce the name. He was the first Earl of Southampton in 1538, after the dissolution of monasteries and it's still occupied by the Earl's descendants, the Barons of Montague. Now I think that's the mill over there which is powered by water using the incoming tide and outflow back to sea from the mill pond on the other side. The mill dam was built by monks and corn was ground at the mill right up until the 20th century. Indeed it was still used to produce animal feeds until 1942. From this sort of section onwards, the river is tidal. And well, you can walk along parts of the last four miles as it goes out to sea. I mean, we did do a, a walk from uh, here down to Buckler's Hard. Uh, do check that one out, but uh, you are a bit restricted um, as to how close you can get to the river. You can see today, at this moment in time, the tide is very much out. Well, folks, we've made it to our final destination, the Montague Arms at Bewley, for a pint of flax double drop. Oh, I've been looking forward to that. And of course, it's crisp time, your favourites, pipers. Well, folks, we've come to the end of the walk and the end of the video. We thought we'd do the end scene here with Bewley Palace behind us. We hope you enjoyed our little exploration along the entire route of the Bewley River. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, 
Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Thank you.